Welcome to this video. Today we're going to talk about things you can do to increase privacy and security on smartphones, both iOS and Android. The very first thing and one of the most important is update. Always keep your phone up to date and this includes the operating system and the apps that are on the phone. If you are using a phone that no longer receives updates to the operating system, you should not continue using that phone and you need to upgrade. Same with applications. If you're using apps that are not supported or not receiving continuous updates, again, you should not be using them. Security changes even daily and so continuous updates are necessary in order to secure your phone. Next, you need to make sure that you have a strong passcode to access your phone. Do not use a four digit pin. Even if you have brute force prevention turned on, meaning that the data will erase if you get the passcode incorrect X number of times, you don't know or may not be aware of existing or future technologies that can get around that. And so you need to use a long secure passcode to access your phone. As far as biometrics, it's convenient, but again, it's not secure as far as accessing your phone. It's easy to hold a phone up to someone's face or hack their fingerprint. And so again, you should be using a long passcode to access the phone. You could use biometrics to access individual applications, though I would still recommend if an application has something very sensitive on it, you will still want to use a passcode. Also on that note, password managers. Password managers are good and a lot of people do have a password manager on their phone, but do not use Face ID or fingerprints to unlock that password manager. Your life is in that password manager and it's too easy to circumvent the security of Face ID or fingerprints. So make sure you have a long secure password for your password manager. Next, you wanna make sure to always and continuously check all privacy settings and app permissions. And so this can include, but not be limited to, making sure that you check your location services, turn them off when you're not using them. And when you do have location services turned on, make sure you're reviewing and restricting which applications have access to your location. Now, generally speaking, I would recommend turning off location services all the time. And yes, this could hinder features such as find my device. So you're gonna to have to make an individual decision with this sort of setting. But location is very sensitive. And in my opinion, it should always be turned off unless it's being actively used. Additionally, review your camera settings, microphone, photos, ads. Basically, you need to go through the list of all permissions that apps have, restrict the ones that don't need access to certain things, and even the ones that should have access, turn them off when they're not in use. This type of data, camera, microphone, location, photos, is very sensitive data, and that's why you need to restrict and protect it. Other settings and options you will want to review are stolen device protection. You do need to enable this on iOS or iPhones. And Android also has some settings for theft protection that needs to be enabled. They're also rolling out some AI features to help protect against stolen devices. Please be aware that both iOS and Android have lockdown modes, though they are not equal. So that's something that you can look into on both phones. And then also make sure you're setting a short time period for how soon a password is required. Limit what displays on your lock screen. And also for phones that support it, you may want to review the brute force protection, which erases all the phone data if a passcode is entered incorrectly a certain number of times. You also need to protect your SIM, which is associated with your phone number. Crooks and thieves and hackers will try to do what's called a SIM swap to gain access to your phone number so that they can then in turn gain access to anything that's associated with that phone number. And so to protect against a SIM swap, you need to add a PIN both to your SIM, but also to your account by contacting your cellular provider and making sure that they do not switch your phone number without first verifying that PIN. Also, you need to get away from using your phone number as a means for 2FA or two-factor authentication. Instead of using your phone number, get into the habit of using authentication apps or hardware token keys. Also, stop giving your phone number out. As much as possible, use a secondary phone number. You can use services like MySudo or other services to get a second phone number. And you can even go as far as having multiple phone numbers to compartmentalize for different uses. As much as possible, only give your personal phone number out to people you personally know and trust. 
even when signing up for services, try to use other phone numbers. You also need to be aware of concerns with backups. Backing up your phone is good in the instance that you lose your phone, you don't lose all of your data with it, but you also have to keep in mind that if there's sensitive information on your phone and you have a backup of that sensitive data, the backup may become a target. Make sure you're backing up securely using secure cloud services or secure devices. Only back up on devices you personally own. Make sure you have strong passwords and 2FA and encryption. In other videos, I've talked about the importance of not clicking on links or attachments and emails, and that does apply here as well on your phone. But in addition to that, you need to make sure that you never ever click on a link sent to you in a text message unless you know the person that text message came from. And even in those instances, you should verify with that sender to make sure they actually sent that link. Hackers will often send malicious links via text message. Also, make sure you review what's being uploaded to cloud services. For example, your messages, photos, if these are sensitive, you don't want them automatically being uploaded to the cloud. And even stuff that you approve being uploaded, make sure that you are uploading them to a trusted cloud service and make sure that that cloud service is well protected with a strong password and 2FA. Next, do not use public Wi-Fi. Even if you have a VPN, which we'll talk about here in just a moment, don't use it. It's just there's so many problems with using public Wi-Fi. Don't do it. Use your own personal network or use the data that you're paying for with your cellular network. Also, as a side note, turn off Wi-Fi while you're out and about in your cell phone settings and also turn off Bluetooth. I know that's a convenience thing. I know people don't like to use cables or cords, but Bluetooth is a security problem. Speaking of VPNs or virtual private networks, you should be using one at all times with your smartphone and not all VPNs are good, not all VPNs are equal, and so the only VPN services you should be considering are ProtonVPN, Movad, Windscribe, or iVPN. Next, you need to reduce the number of applications installed on your smartphone. Go through and remove all the applications you no longer use or don't need. If it's something that you can do inside a browser, do that instead. But every time you install an application, you're increasing the number of ways for a malicious actor to exploit or gain access to your phone. Even legitimate applications can be exploited or hacked, and they can also very much be a privacy concern as well. On that note of privacy, I would strongly recommend avoiding installing any application that's owned by Meta slash Facebook or TikTok. These are strong privacy concerns. And as mentioned earlier in the video, make sure you're going through your settings and reviewing the permissions each application has on your phone, but also keep in mind that these permissions can be circumvented. Next, do not click on pop-ups. If one pops up on your phone, do not click on it. And also make sure that you're turning off your phone at least once a week and turning it back on to restart it, which has been suggested in the event that if malware were to get on your phone often by turning your phone off and turning it back on, it can help clear that out, not always, but can help mitigate that to some degree. Also, review your notification settings. If there's something private that you don't want popping up on your screen from a certain application you have on your phone, make sure you're turning those notifications off. Next, you need to review the privacy and security settings for your Google or Apple account that's being used with your smartphone. Make sure you have a strong password set up for either your Google account or your Apple account and a strong password includes at least 25 characters, a combination of random upper and lowercase letters, symbols, and numbers, and make sure that two-factor authentication is set up. Also make sure you're reviewing the privacy and security settings for that Google or Apple account. Next is encryption. Now for iOS users, device encryption should be enabled by default, but for Android users, you need to double check your settings to make sure encryption is turned on and specifically check the encryption settings for external SD cards as well as chat messages. And iMessage does have encryption, but really, especially if you're going to be communicating between Android and iOS, you really need an alternative solution, which is signal which will encrypt not just your messages but your phone calls your video calls and this is a free application and with your mail you should be using a service such as proton mail or tuda tuda nota to encrypt your email communications to any user that you're sending an email to i do need to clarify that iphone users will need to enable advanced data protection which is end-to-end -end encryption for icloud and this is turned off by default to enable it, just go to your iPhone settings, click on your name at the top, and then click on iCloud and scroll down to advanced data protection. Also, please be aware of metadata, especially with your pictures. 
Metadata can be used with videos or photos that you send to identify you. Now, services like Signal do strip most metadata out, but even so, you just need to be very aware that sending a photo to someone could be used, or a video could be used to identify you, where you're at, and other information. Social media, which we kind of already talked about as far as Facebook and TikTok, but in general, I would strongly recommend avoiding social media as much as possible. If you absolutely need to use it, try to use it in the browser rather than installing an application for it. A lot of these social media applications try to spy on you on your mobile device. And then web browsers. For iOS users, Safari is good, but it's not the best. It's definitely better than Google Chrome. Avoid Google Chrome at all costs, whether you're on Google Android or Apple iOS. I also really wouldn't use Microsoft Edge either. Some better alternatives would be Mozilla Firefox or Firefox Focus. You could use Brave, DuckDuckGo browser. And there are a few other privacy-oriented browsers, but primarily stay away from Google Chrome, Microsoft Edge. Never ever use or install the Opera browser. And also make sure you review the privacy settings and security settings for whichever browser you are using. Make sure to change your search engine to something more privacy oriented like DuckDuckGo. You need to be careful as to what devices you connect to your smartphone, whether you're plugging it into a computer or whatnot. That can be very dangerous. I would strongly recommend that you only connect devices you personally own to your mobile device. Do not plug it into a work laptop or work desktop or something owned by a school or someone you just don't know. That can be a very, very big concern as far as privacy and security if you're just connecting it to, de to devices you do not own. And by that same token, if you do not personally own your smartphone, you really should not be doing anything private on that phone because you don't control it. And so just make sure that personal conversations, phone calls, pretty much everything should be done on your personal device. If you do have a work-issued phone, make sure you are strictly using that for work-related items. Now, there are some physical things that you can purchase, such as screen protection or privacy protection screens, which will help make sure that people from an angle have a harder time reading what you have up on your screen. You could also purchase Faraday bags, phone security straps to make sure it's more difficult to steal your phone. Camera covers are a good thing to look at. And then also please be mindful of where you keep your phone. For example, I would never take the phone into the bathroom or a bedroom. You need to have designated places in your house that are phone free. Again, your smartphone is basically a spy device. It has a microphone, a camera, GPS. There's so much spying that can go on with your phone. And so certain parts of your house need to be off limits to smartphones. And with all of this said, you need to keep in mind that you don't know what the future brings. You don't know what technologies will be coming or secretly exist right now. And so there are just some things you need to keep off your phone no matter what. Some people falsely put too much trust in some of these security and privacy features or settings and think that they are fully protected. If there is something that if found would absolutely destroy or ruin your life, just don't do it. Don't store it on your phone. Find other means to do things privately. Just keep in mind that things can be circumvented. And as a last note, be mindful of who you vote for. Vote for people in government who value and prioritize privacy and security for you, the individual citizens of where you live. That is everything for this video, but if you do have any comments or questions, please post them down below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and please consider sharing it. If you'd like to support the channel, go ahead and hit that join button, the subscribe button, the thanks button, or that bell notification icon to get notifications on future videos. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you have a great day.